In my opinion, she is, in that role, she is the female Bond. For me. Hi guys, it's me, A. And I'm Joe. And we're ready to talk about our favourite leading ladies in film. The internet definition of a leading lady, it says it's an informal term for an actress who plays a secondary lead or se supporting role, usually a love interest, to the leading actor in a film or play. And now, how do we feel about that? Um, I mean, I think we can agree that that's kind of changed a lot over mm. the last few years. Seems really just ridiculous and like outdated yeah. to me. Le so. Just a little bit, but uh, only a little just bit. Just a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> quite, quite a bit. On the other hand, <laughs> Cambridge Dictionary, they say a female actor who has the most important part in a play or a film. That's a lot better. Surely. I reckon so, yeah. Like I mean, that makes more sense. It makes, it just, it's a much more general. Like the, the first one was very oddly specific. Yeah. Um, and just a very oddly misogynistic. I really like the fact that it uses the word actor instead of actress because I feel like that's sort of a bit more outdated now. So like, what do you think about that? Like, why have different, like, terms for them? It just, like, it works. It doesn't really matter their yeah. gender. It matters that they are, like, performing a character. Mm. Um, there's this bit in uh, Between Two Ferns where the interviewer uh, is interviewing Brie Larson and he asks her, um, you've won best actress, have you ever considered being best actor? <laughs> yeah. And it makes me laugh because it is kind of absurd that yeah. we have those like two different like terms. And it's always like considered that the female equivalent of an actor is like lower down and less experienced like you said. Definitely, with Lassen, there's so certainly like a divide there. That definitely needs to change. Yeah. I definitely feel like there's more like a variety of female characters that are easier to relate to because I feel like before there's just sort of like a stock sort of like image of like what a female character should be like and just like therefore it's like making like women in real life feel like they have to be a certain way and I feel like nowadays it's more like you can be anything because being a woman it isn't one thing there's a whole spectrum of different characters you can have like evil characters you can have the love interest that's completely fine but you can also have someone who's strong you can have someone who's in the lead and i think it's just great to see like that reflected in film that you can just like be a normal person and not just like one sort of like stereotype yeah there's there's so much variation now i mean especially in action i feel yeah. like um Platforms with like DC and Marvel have been really giving um, women m much greater representation, mm. uh, especially in the action genre. But that's sort of built off um, characters from the last century, um, like um, Sarah Connor in Terminator and Sigourney Weaver as um, Ripley in Alien, who are sort of universal characters. I, personally, I really look up to them. It just it, like it's a character that just so happens to be female. It's genderless. Mm. Are there any? male roles mm. that you would like to see played by a woman? Hmm, right. Um, I don't know because I feel like maybe action films could use more like female representation, like maybe James Bond for example. I think he, maybe a female Bond would be necessary. Yeah, I feel like a female equivalent of Bond because mm. I was recently said that the uh, writer of Bond said that she'd much rather have a female equivalent of Bond Yeah. because it's almost unfair to give a, a, a female, a woman, an, an actor, the male equivalent, like the male character, and make mm. them play that. It would be much like fairer to give them someone, like girls, to look up to, who's so, someone they can call their own. Yeah. Instead of just completely just erasing like male characters and replacing them with female characters, you should have like both sides of the spectrum, and like you know, having like men represented and having women represented, and like just having this original character for them to claim as their own and not just having to replace someone else yeah, in the just, process. Just because a male character has been made female, it doesn't mean that it's, like, it doesn't, doesn't they, they, can, they can go together. When I watch a film, I don't think, right, okay, so the main thing about this character is they are male. Mm. I don't go in watching that, I think, right, okay, so there's this and there's this. It doesn't make any sense at all. Yeah, I feel like Caitlin Dever is certainly very much up and coming. She's really changing perceptions about women in film. Yeah. But she's in a lot of indie films, in my opinion. Yeah. I feel it's time we see her taking the sort of character that she wants, someone that pushes boundaries, but putting that in a more mainstream environment, like mm. Marvel or, you know, somewhere a bit more blockbustery. Yeah, I mean, she's definitely up and coming, and obviously she was in Booksmart, and like, she is taking on main roles, but like you said, it's in indie films. One of the things I love is in an interview that we, um, did with her, or mm. like getting to film did with her, she was so down to earth and so fun. Yeah. And she was clearly like in, she has such a great relationship yeah. with her, you definitely um, see it. yeah, with her co star, uh, Bibi. It's just, 
so it's like awesome to see her clearly being like someone like us and like there was this bit where she talks about compliments mm. I love how oh, like, yeah. she, she's struggling to like take that compliment something that we can relate to I think in real life how well do you take compliments no, not very not well. well at all actually like I always just recoil, oh, but no, probably not though. That's probably not me. <laughs> it's true. I'm like, you look so great. She's like, no. Yeah, and they, they also talk about like how they sort of don't have boundaries like with their relationship on set. Mm. And I think it's just really nice to see like two leading ladies just supporting each other, just like having a good time like when yeah. they're filming. It's just nice. Yeah. I think the leading lady that I most admire is Lupita Nyong'o. Yes. Like she's got such this, this, she's got such a wonderful sort of grounded nature to her. She clearly understands herself. And then that when she comes to her roles, she, she's just almost like so powerful with her empathy. Mm. She's able to understand who she's playing. So like she's talked extensively in interviews about how she understood her characters. She knew that they were different. She wanted a more naturalistic approach. She's very, she's a very versatile she's actress. She's so versatile. And just also a very, a very nice person. She's yeah. very open about her and her, her characters. In, in Us, she mentions how she's queen and cockroach, mm, yeah. which I find really interesting. With the Red character, there was a little more, more of a stylistic approach, and you know, Jordan had described her as queen and cockroach, and so that embodying the body, you know, of a cockroach and how still it can be, and also how, you know, kind of like skittish and skittery. Like for me, I do feel like she can hold up like a whole film, like no matter what it is. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. just, she's amazing. Mm -hmm. I really, I think there's this moment in 12 Years a Slave, which she she's holding this piece of soap and she's so raw and delicate mm. in that moment. It's it, like every time I see it, it gives me goosebumps. It's clear that she was able to put herself into that character's mindset and really like I, when I'm watching her, I'm not seeing Lupita Nyong'o playing her character. No, exactly. I'm yeah. seeing her, like, her character. I stink so much, I make myself gag. Five hundred pounds of cotton, day in, day out, more than any man here. And for that, I will be clean. That's all I ask. I feel like she could play, like, anything. Regardless I'm of gender as well. Very much. I'm looking forward to her um, playing a chair in her next role. Oh, just, nice. Yeah, but like just just anything she could easily like, take on and just like Completely seize just, it. Oh yeah, make it her own. <laughs> She's just brilliant. I love her. Yeah. My favourite leading lady of all time, and she's pretty recent, but she is literally my leading lady of all time, is Aquafina. I just completely love her. She's hilarious. She's got such a unique and just like vibrant personality, but she's also just like really talented at acting. It's just simple as that. She's so down to earth, like with Lupita. She's just completely full of like joy when she plays her characters. And I think even with like films like The Farewell, she really just managed to bring sort of like a really just a really unique sort of stance on the character and I thought it was just really interesting to see how she managed to convey so much in that film when she wasn't speaking and especially the grief for her grandma because the farewells about when her grandma's about to pass away she manages to convey so much in just her eyes alone if you go night I will find out right away really yeah Zala She's just really good at bringing like something to set. Like I think on the red carpet, she said that she got slapped across the face by a monkey. And like, no one would say that apart from Aquafina. Uh, I encountered a monkey, uh, he slapped me um, across the face. Um, so I had, a, I had a couple of adventures, yeah. She's definitely going places. I oh can, yeah. I can really see that she's making a, she's really carving out sort of a name for her in the mm. industry. So an actor I really look up to as well, it's kind of on the flip side of Lupita, is Charlize Theron. Mm. She's able to take on some really cool action roles and really strong action heroes that would typically be a male role. Like in Mad Max Fury Road, although she doesn't play, necessarily play Max, she's playing um, basically, she is the leading character in that film, and she's standing up for her fellow woman, but she's also not being defined by her character and their, and their gender. Mm. She's 
taking on this role and just doing what's right. And I, I find that really inspiring. Yeah. She understands her characters like Lupita, but at the same time is able to take on a more unbelievable role like in Mad Max or Atomic Blonde, where she yeah. gives a very gritty and very physical performance that you'd see in possibly more male-oriented action film. Like, in my opinion, she is, in that role, she is the female Bond, for me. Ooh. That, yeah, she is female Bond in that. She does a lot of the similar things as Bond would. Those stunts, though. Those, yeah, exactly, and she's able to put herself in that and do what would be considered a male stunt. Yeah. As, as Anything a man can do, Charlize Theron can do. <laughs> Better even, maybe. Oh, maybe. Yeah, definitely. Maybe. Also, I feel like she's able to do like more sensitive roles, so like with like Kubo and the two strings. Yeah. I feel like as the monkey, won't reveal anything about the monkey, but as the monkey, she was definitely really sensitive. She really managed to just bring something different. So like watching her in all these action films and then seeing her like voice in the monkey, I was like, wow, like this is just completely different. Yeah. And also I respect people who can do voice acting because mm. that is a completely different like ball pit over there, you know? Yeah. And she manages to like bring everything in her voice in that film as well. So she's just, she's got all bases covered. Like I'm a big action fan, but the fact that she can take on uh, like a spirit guardian ninja monkey protecting a child with a magical guitar, it kind of shows, I don't think there's any more way of showing more versatility than I that. I mean, yeah. I have to say, a lot of people do judge me on this, but Rebel Wilson as a leading lady, okay. she is just, Amazing. Any film that has Rebel Wilson on it, I'll be watching it, you know? She, well, mm, not any, not Cats. Sorry. Uh, that's an exception. I'll, I'll, <laughs> Maybe we'll not. let that slide. But in like Pitch Perfect, I think that was the first time I ever saw her. She was obviously Fat Amy and she was just hilarious. She stole like that whole film. Obviously all the characters had something else to bring, but Rebel Wilson just made that film her own. And she just managed to make it just so hilarious and she brought that sort of like general Fat Amy style comedy to a lot of her other films but she's also able to bring so much more. She's just the best, she supports all the other ladies. I think in like an interview she mentioned that she could throw down someone for any of her female friends. I mean come on, she would take someone down for her female friends. She's an amazing leading lady. I feel like I feel like I could throw down like uh, when, if I'm ever out <laughs> with my girls in real life something happened, yeah. I feel like I could yeah. I could protect myself, definitely. On Netflix says, isn't it romantic? And I, it was really nice to see her like reversing like the typical like rom-com sort of style of like lady and making it her own and making it a story about self-love as well as romance. And I thought that was just so nice to see. So I think in the end, the qualities that we most admire in a leading lady are that they're grounded. Like versatile. Very much. That they're, they're kind. Maybe a bit of humour. Yeah. And I think just in general, a, a decent human being. Yeah, I mean, it's nice, <laughs> isn't it? So these are all our favorites, but definitely let us know who you would add to the list. Oh, uh, Scarlett Johansson. Oh, okay. Mm, Emma Watson. Shusha Ronan. Oh, okay. Uh, Brie Larson. Octavia Spencer. Let us know down below in the comments.